Hello, hello. I've arrived. All right, so we're back with some more Conquer the Shadow World. Indeed, indeed. So let's see. Schedule. So today we're playing Conquer the Shadow World, of course. Tomorrow we're going to be starting the Destiny 2 lore, uh, lore exposition. Hmm, is that the word to use? I don't know. Explanation, presentation, some, some, something that rhymes with, or ends with Asian, I'm sure. One of those words, there's a lot of words that end with that, but one of those words is the appropriate word to use in this context, I'm sure. So, anyway, where was I? So yeah, we're going to start doing that tomorrow. I, I did, uh, I did do a little bit of, uh, looking and I am, I was uh, a bit, a bit off on the time, timeline of events because I had thought that the, the Forsaken expansion that I'm going to be playing in Destiny, uh, once we have concluded with the Destiny lore, uh, Destiny 2, I should say, I'm going to be playing Forsaken in Destiny 2 because that's the expansion that it's a, the game that it's an expansion for, not Destiny 1. But yes, I was a little bit off on the timeline. I thought that that would, uh, that Forsaken was going to be no longer in the game as of like December. So I was in a little bit of a hurry to uh, get started on that. But uh, it seems like it's actually going to be sticking around until February, actually. And it's going to be free to play starting in December. So yes, yeah, so we've got some more time than I had uh, initially expected. Which is good, because I feel like the, uh, the lore is going to take me a little bit longer than I was initially anticipating. Um, I'm not going to go into super... Well, I'll talk about it more tomorrow, but uh, in short, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on Destiny lore. I'm going to talk about, um, in the first stream, I'm going to talk about sort of the, the background uh, story of Destiny. And then in uh, the second stream, which um, I feel like this lore might be a little bit shorter, and uh, hopefully, if it is, then we will be able to get into uh, playing Destiny 2 in that same stream. But uh, in the second stream, we'll begin talking about uh, the uh, actual plot of the game Destiny and all of its uh, expansions. And then uh, Destiny 2 and all of the expansions in it leading up to Forsaken. And um, yeah, so that... Yes, tomorrow's stream will be at 10 a.m. I just realized I don't have a whole lot of time to prepare for that. I do have some some notes, but I need to take more detailed notes if I want to present a comprehensible presentation. So, we might... No, uh, I was going to say we might push it back a little bit, but I don't... I don't... We can't really push it back very far. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Because, yeah, tonight I am expecting the stream to be a little bit shorter, or to potentially be a little bit shorter than is usual. Because as I understand it, Conquer the Shadow World is not a super long game, and I feel like we're pretty close to beating it. We uh, we got pretty close last time. Uh, so, you know, if we... I was originally thinking of doing something else to fill, to fill time if we finish too early, but I guess what I might do instead is I might just, like... Uh, start looking up destiny lore doing doing a bit more research and uh, preparing some better notes for tomorrow so yeah I guess um, let's see so that's the the business so tomorrow's stream if I didn't already say it uh, will be at 10 a.m uh, central time next week we'll be back with some more uh, another collab on Tuesday with Altariana Shepi Sheps and Judo Kami uh, I think as I understand it, we are we're going to stick to the schedule of starting around 5.30ish uh, central time and then continuing for a couple hours before moving on to, uh, yeah, you know, the idea of us playing uh, two games on any given night on our collab nights. Though, I don't know, I think we did that intentionally. Uh, two weeks ago, and then this last week, we mostly did that because uh, Dest or sorry, Borderlands 2 started to get a bit uppity with us, particularly in regards to dragons, or in regards to scenes uh, including dragons. Not scenes, I guess. 
areas, including dragons, for whatever reason. I don't know if that was a coincidence or if they've, the dragons in that game are just unusually buggy. But, um, yes. So, I think we're going to continue along the lines of you know, aiming for about two hours of one game and then going for a couple hours of a, of the other. Something like that. But, um, so yeah, so that will be at 7.30pm Central Time. Next week, uh, on Thursday, we will be doing something else. I'm not sure yet. But uh, on that Friday, afterwards, we will be doing the second part of the Destiny lore presentation. Uh, the part of the presentation that... Uh, actually, you know, involves the story of the games. So yeah, so that'll be on Friday. And again, if we have time, we will also start playing the game. Uh, I guess I will be resuming playing the game, because I have played Destiny 2 and uh, all the expansions leading up to Forsaken. But let's see, is there anything else to be said? So, lore tomorrow, collab, oh yeah. The Friday streams will be as usual at 10 a.m. So yes, so lore tomorrow, collab Tuesday, something uh, next Thursday, not sure yet what, and then more Destiny 2 lore on next Friday. And I think that should be basically that. Um, so yeah, so for other business, other stream related business, I have uh, started working on a new version of the, like, a uh, game overlay of this here screen. Gonna revamp it a little bit. Let's see, so that is in the works. Um, yeah, I intend to, you know, essentially go over basically every, all of the sort of, uh, screens that we have. I think, well, the prep screen the prep and the break screen could probably use a little bit of work. So we'll... They're pretty good. I might want to touch them up a little bit. But they're pretty good. Um, but yeah, this this screen probably needs the most work. It's the one that's gone the longest without sort of an update. Because I know the uh, the version of the, the game screen that I'm using now isn't the original version that I used to use. So yes, so this is definitely, it's not the screen that I'm working on the first, but it's definitely the one that needs uh, work uh, the most, I would say. But uh, I decided to focus on the game screen because, you know, when we're playing games, which is the bulk of most streams, uh, that, is the st that is the screen that you see the most. So yes, um, let's see, what else is there to say? I guess that's all of the pertinent business. There is... Hmm. I don't know, there's some other business, but I don't... It shouldn't affect things too much, I don't think. It could, potentially, but it shouldn't, in theory, uh, and ideally. So we, we won't worry about it for the time being. If it becomes more relevant, then I will, then I will bring it up. But, um, yeah, just some, just some personal business that, again, could... If it does affect the stream, it will, it will affect the stream in in a, in a positive way, I assure you. Just to, uh, or rather, if it would potentially give me more time to, to work on the stream. But, uh, yeah. We will, we will see. I'm not 100% sure on the details of it. So I, um, I don't know, maybe I should, maybe I should refrain from bringing, bringing up things like, oh yeah, if this happens, then we'll have more time for the stream or whatever. Um, before I have any confidence that the, that such things will occur. So, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. So yes, I already talked about the schedule. I already talked about our plans for tonight. And I think that should cover us for the time being. Yeah, I'm still thinking of sort of uh, other games that I want to be playing in this, uh, in this time. Because again, we're looking to play, play through... Uh, Ideally, several shorter games uh, before we move on to the next the next phase, which was let's see, was that? Were we gonna do? I think Hollow Knight is our next like uh, for uh, the uh, getting full completion of Hollow Knight was our next goal. 
And then after that, we would move on to, uh, we were going to move on to Breath of the Wild and Final Fantasy XIV. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sure quite how far away that is at this point, but um, yeah, we've still got a few games in between now and Hollow Knight, or at least, uh, you know, I could start Hollow Knight at any point, I guess. But uh, I want to put a few, few more games in between now and us resuming Hollow Knight, just for the sake of, of more variety. But give me just a second here while I crack open my water bottle. And now, it is time to sip. Sip. <clears throat> hmm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too eager to, to say my, to, may, to say sip. I'm finding I'm, I'm saying sip before I've fully sipped. Which uh, leads to all sorts of problems. Never, never go for an early, an early saying of sip. Mid-sip. Just doesn't, just doesn't work out. But yes, let us get started. Let us get started. Whoop. All right, where's the game? Where did it? Where on my hard drive is the game? I should say. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Conquer the shadow world. All right. Whoops. Well, I meant to, um... Hold on a second. Whoops. All right, should have dealt with this a little bit ago. Hmm. I forgot, I messed with my audio settings. I, for I messed with my audio settings and I forgot to, uh, to reset them. But they're, they should be okay now. Anyway, we're going to continue playing in novice mode because we're, we're not yet quite that good. Whoops. As evidenced. <laughs> uh, now I've thrown myself all, all sorts of off. So we'll take a second to recompose ourselves. And yes, we will... Well, I guess I really didn't take a moment to recompose myself there, but it's fine. We're gonna fight this boss. We're gonna fight Mogus, our good friend. Ah, and we're gonna miss also. Yes. I. Oh yes, right. So the other, the thing that I was about to say before we got into this boss fight was that if if things go really short, I think we might try one or one or more runs in like not novice mode, and just sort of see how that treats us. But, um, yeah, until we have beaten the game for the first time, at least I am currently planning on just, uh, playing in novice mode. And we really need to get better at some of these jumps, huh? A little bit too eager. A little bit too eager today. And here is Norris once more. I will admit, I was unusually... I'm in an unusually... Uh, unusually energetic day. You may not be able to tell it from uh, my mannerisms. But, uh... But yeah, I don't know. I just sort of... I don't know if I'm just, like, excited to play the game. Or if I... Or if I'm just... I don't know. I've been, I've been sleeping a little bit better than... Well... Not sleeping better. I would say um, sleeping more consistently, <laughs> going to bed at a at a regular time. Right, I forgot. The Nor get Norse gets pretty fast once we've uh, gone through his phases here. Oops. Oh, where are we? Huh. I guess we were clinging onto the ceiling, maybe. I was about to, to say 
I didn't I didn't realize that you could cling onto the ceiling there, but I guess there's no reason to believe that I wouldn't, considering that you can cling onto every other ceiling. But yeah, that and not assuming that I can run on every wall were have also been have been issues for me. Because yeah, like even no actually yeah, walls that are I'm kind of in a bad way here, aren't I? But yeah. Area transitions that are blocked off due to a boss battle are not walls that you can climb on. Or, uh, yeah, not walls that you can climb up, I should say. But every other wall is. So I should really... My default assumption should be that any given wall is a wall that I can climb up. My default assumption should be that any wall is a wall that I can climb up, basically. Nope. Oh yes, this guy. I don't... I think this is like the one boss that we never came up with a... Or no, we called him Chandler. Chandler, right. But yeah, I think... Given that this boss has a name, I think that... Yes, I think that we have named every boss in this game. Of course, I'm assuming that... I'm... Assuming that they don't have official names, just just on the grounds that I don't know what those names would be. Which is maybe not a sound assumption, but it's the assumption that I have made in this instance. I'm still not super sure how to avoid some of Chandler's patterns. I feel like we got pretty good at it last time we fought him. But yeah, so like I was saying, I've been going to bed at a more consistently, at a more consistent time. Which could be... I don't know, maybe, maybe, I didn't, uh, because I didn't have work today. Maybe I'm just a little bit, uh, shaken from that. Not shaken. Uh. I haven't, uh, just, in general, I just have a unusual amount of energy, and I'm not 100% sure how to, how to, uh, to deal with that, I guess. And again, it could be any number of things. It could be the fact that I uh, had the day off from work today. It could be the fact that uh, I've been sleeping more regularly. It could be any number of things, like I said. Oh dear. But either, whatever, whatever may be the source of this, uh, newfound vigor, it has left me with, uh, far more haste than I perhaps have the, uh, my conscious mind can, can keep up with. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. Yeah, this one was Ruffini, named after Paolo Ruffini, who invented, uh, Synthetic Division. Ah. Because yeah, it does seem to be more or less hitting this boss from the uh, middle is what is necessary for, uh... Yeah, the mid- the midline on the boss is about where it, uh, transitions from stepping on this boss here means that you'll take damage to stepping on the boss here means that the boss will take damage. And I remember we did, uh... We did establish that breaking all of the breaking Ruffini down into uh, these smallest components before doing our stomping, or into nothing but these smallest components before doing our stomping, was not necessarily a good tactic. But uh, I'm glad that our uh, implementation of it there turned out okay, at least. Even if it even if it may have been unintentional. Not ah, right. I forgot that uh Fred, this we named this one Fred, right. 
Okay, I don't think Fred has a... is vulnerable mid, uh... At least I haven't been able to hit Fred after they, uh, attack, but before they, uh, started their next attack, during which they are invincible. Ooh. What are we... Hmm. Unfortunate. I don't remember what we named that boss. This one's Ferris. I don't think I brought that up earlier. But yes, this one's Ferris. Ah. Just barely missed. There we go. And we're not going to be able to hit Ferris in time. Oh, I guess we are. I was sure that we weren't going to be able to uh, hit Ferris uh, during that particular moment period of vulnerability. Oh dear. Got to take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths, and not and not do that. <laughs> We'll get ourselves under control. Ourself? Myself. I will get myself under control here. I don't know what state you're in. You may be in perfect control. You might even be in Vermont. Alright. That one... There we go. Unfortunate. And there we go. Okay. Yes, and we're back to Fred, who uh, ended our run last time. Ah. Just not fa not quite fast enough. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> that could have been easily avoided. But uh, alas, I did not do so. Yeah, it really does seem, no matter how much I try, uh, as soon as Fred gets out of the invulnerability from uh, being hit, uh, they immediately enter invulnerability of their attack pattern. The invulnerability of their attack pattern, I should say. Which makes them, you know, hard to punish, but I guess the attack isn't necessarily meant to be punishable. Or no, it wasn't, it wasn't Fred that we lost to that last time, it was, uh... Did I call you Stomper or something? I feel like it was something, something to that effect. Some name, uh, related to them running into walls and whatnot. Pounder, maybe? Hmm. Not sure, not sure. This one, the Forbidden One, of which we will speak no more. <laughs> eh, maybe that's a little bit rude. I suppose it's... I mean it in, in, a, in a joking way, and I hope it comes off as such to those of you who are in the know on the joke. There we are. And then we have the cannons again. Which I actually managed to uh, surmount this time without suffering tremendous harm, which is very uncommon. All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we can just sort of damage boost through that. I'd assume that the little electrical field there would be impassable. But I guess I mostly just sort of assumed that. Well, I don't know. I guess I never had any reason to assume that. I just never tried to pass it, and I guess I just sort of came up with a, a reason in my head why I never tried to pass it. 
beyond it, you know, doing damage to you when you touch it. But yeah, if we can if we can hit Wiggles uh, as soon as they get out of uh, hit and vulnerability, we can really just uh, give them the business. Very good, very good. Ah. Huh. Hmm. It really does seem... This one's Steve, by the way. It feels like Steve does... Has, like, a lot of, um... Unintuitive, sort of, un-telegraphed uh, invulnerability. Because I feel like whenever whenever we like try to hit Steve before the start of their first attack pattern, it just never goes through. It never registers. And I have I wonder if that's intentional or not, or perhaps e even if it's a thing at all and uh, not just me missing a lot. But this has been a pretty sloppy run so far. But it's not not too bad. This is a platforming section that uh, has historically challenged me somewhat, but we got through it without too much difficulty there. Our good friend Mogus, once more. Thought he'd be coming from the other side, so I did not prepare appropriately. There we go. Yeah, now they'll be coming from this side. Ah. There we go, there we go. Doing doing pretty good. So we might we might be closer to uh to finishing Conquer the Shadow World than I uh had thought. Well we'd be even closer if we uh didn't hit uh spikes like that. I guess us hitting spikes isn't necessarily mutually exclusive with us making progress. But uh it's easier to make progress if you're not hitting spikes, of course. Alright, we're back to Norris. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be a ceiling up there, from what I... Oh no, there's a ceiling. Okay. So yeah, there is definitely a ceiling that is, must have been what we... Uh, latched onto that one time that we were up there for an unusually long period of time. Hmm. Where's Norris coming from? There they are. Really should have, uh, I should, I don't know why the ceiling's so hard to, uh, latch onto. I guess it must be it must just be higher up than it looks like because I'm assuming that the the ceiling the ceiling tiles are roughly uh, where the like here hereabouts but um, I'm moving like uh, I'm just I've been assuming that the ceiling tiles were you know roughly where the uh, the highest of the not black pixels is. But yeah, I can see now that I actually go up quite a bit higher than that. I can go to where I'm fully invisible, obscured by the background. All right, back to Ace. Ace has also been something of a trouble spot for us. as evidenced. But it's all cool. It's all fine. And we'll double back just a little bit. Head back to the right. 
And most importantly, we will do all of this in a calm, collected manner, in perfect control. Norse is coming from the top there, so they can't be jumped on. I guess, you know, you can you can jump on uh, Norris from, like, beneath them, basically. The game doesn't like you uh, landing on them from the inside, but as long as you have, like, the hit points for it, you can just do that. Like, that's just a thing you can do. You can jump up into Norris, into hmm. Norris's hitbox, and cause damage that way. Hmm. It almost feels sometimes like, rather than Norris simply becoming faster with each pass, I feel like, uh, or with each hit, I feel like Norris also, the, the time between Norris's attacks becomes a little bit faster. Or not faster, but a little bit more random. I don't know, it could just be that I'm the, uh, I'm not used to necessarily the fight progressing at the rate that it was progressing there. Maybe I was more used to it progressing faster or slower. And uh, that's what made the timing feel off. Alright, I'm taking too many hits from Ace. I'm being a bit too reckless. There we go. Yeah, I just noticed. It seems like um, whether Norris or, uh, sorry, Ace fires projectiles upwards or downwards is also a factor, or not a factor of, or no, yeah, it would be a, a factor of, I think, is also dependent on your position relative to Ace. I'd always assumed that uh, when Ace was going around the top that they just attacked upwards or downwards, and when they were on the bottom, they, uh, they attacked upwards. But no, it does seem to be dependent on your position relative to to Ace. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about those spikes. Alright, back to Chandler. Alright. Very good. And see, so now we'll have the opportunity to swing by. All right, we've got this well in hand, I think. We understand it well enough, at the very least. Ah, I say getting hit. At least we didn't get a hit, didn't get hit a second time there. That would have been unfortunate. And this is also going to be unfortunate. Ah, but no, we did him. We did avoid damage there. Very good. Chandler is defeated. There are other bosses that I feel are a little bit harder than Chandler, but I feel like Chandler's are our least consistent boss, at the very least. Not the hardest, but the, the one that I have had the most trouble just sort of getting down the patterns on. Yeah, Ferris is not a huge deal. I've got to, uh, for whatever reason, I always... I always try to avoid the center as though it were a hurt box, but it's not, uh, as far as I can tell. Especially not now, when it's the part that I have to hit to uh, defeat the boss. But yeah, like, before that part, I always I always try to avoid it uh, out of fear that it will damage me. But it doesn't, so I've got to, you know, act accordingly. If I need to escape through the middle, I can escape through the middle. That isn't necessarily wise at all times, because the middle is also where the projectiles come from, which probably led to the misconception in the first place, the idea, just the idea that I jump towards the middle and I get hit by a projectile, and I don't necessarily recognize that it was the projectile versus touching the core that damaged me. And that was, that was just ill-considered. Oh. I wasn't expecting to get hit immediately out of invincibility there, but I guess if I didn't want to uh, get hit out of immediately out of invincibility, I shouldn't have been that close to the boss while I was invincible, huh? But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, how much it's reflecting in 
what other aspects of my behavior, but I definitely feel like I'm talking faster than usual today. I'm having trouble keeping up with the keeping up in my speech with the rate at which my mind is is moving. I was going to say processing, but I guess I'm not really processing what I'm saying, which is probably part of the problem. Hmm. Take me out there a little bit. But yeah, of all the bosses, I feel like Fred is probably the hardest. We, I think, I feel like we beat Fred fairly consistently. I say losing to Fred. I feel like we beat Fred fairly consistently compared to some bosses at least. In particular, again, Chandler. Mm. Okay, so that first time before the first attack pattern, the attack didn't go through seemingly. But the second time it did go through. So it isn't purely an issue of you have to wait until the first attack pattern to be able to damage this boss, uh, Steve, if I didn't already mention it. But there definitely seems to be, again, unless it's just inaccuracy on my part, but it definitely seems like there's a period of time that you have to wait before the boss becomes vulnerable upon entering the room. All right, so we're going to enter Mogus's room again. Going to wait for him to come down. And wait again. Ah. I think I think the issue was there was that I tried to sort of course correct. Well, that time I should have course corrected. Yeah, the first time I feel like my, my timing was good, I just uh, lost confidence in myself. Which is no good. We already we already established last time that we need to execute with confidence. Because all the planning in the world won't won't matter if you don't actually follow your own plans. For some reason, I always see that green room and I think that we're about to fight Chandler, but no, we come up... Well, generally, I guess. Not necessarily, but generally. We come at the Chandler fight from below. Yes, now we're fighting Norris. I guess I assume it's... I think of it... I think of Chandler because Chandler's perhaps the... Is a, is a boss that fights in a green arena and is probably the most notable boss of such... Uh, with such a distinction. At least that I can think of in this game. Most notable to me, perhaps. Right. I always forget that that, um... This particular portion on the top left here, attached to this hook, which uh, resembles a crane, I suppose. It always, to my mind, looks like something I should be able to jump on, but I never can. And I'm assuming that's not just, again, an issue of me not landing in the right place. I'm assuming that is just, it's a background object. Just not one that's super clearly delineated. The gameplay portion of this game is fun, but some of the graphics are a little bit confusing, I will say. There we go. But yeah, Chandler is far from the next boss, but we're getting closer to where Chandler dwells, I think, at this point. Oh dear. Alright. <clears throat> that could have gone better, but it could have gone a lot worse. That also could have gone better.
I feel like the, uh, my fear of this room has sort of given it a, a certain power, if, uh, if you understand what I'm saying. It kind of psychs me out, that platforming, because I'm used to it being, that platforming is being some of the, uh, the platforming that I'm worst at in this game. Alright, so we can fall safely now. It's kind of funny how uh, inconsistent we've been with the Chandler fight in the past. Because really, it's one of the most consistent bosses. Because, like, your, uh... Nothing, nothing about your positioning changes how this boss uh, moves or acts. It always does the exact same motions every time. And of course, now I'm off my rhythm, so I've uh, struggled somewhat. I maybe could have avoided that if I hadn't jumped. But alas. I wonder if it's possible with the right angle and the right uh, skills to uh, be able to sort of one cycle. I guess one cycle probably isn't the right word, but um, two cycle uh, Ferris here. There we are. There we are. Okay. Took more damage than I would have liked, which is to say any damage at all. <laughs> but uh, more damage than I than I would have liked. Perhaps more than I uh, expected would be a better term here. Facing, facing our friend there, whose name that I've briefly forgotten, but it's Ferris. Ferris is the name. Hmm. That. Yeah, that wasn't about to work. And the the orb, Rufini, always comes out at an angle when they get or upward at an angle when they get stuck in there, or at least they have done so 100% consistent in my uh, experience. I don't know if that's necessarily 100% true of 100% of the situations, but it's always been true so so far in the time that I have observed. It really feels like that shouldn't have worked, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'm never one to uh, to pass up free damage on a boss, at least not intentionally. Unintentionally, of course, definitely, but uh, not intentionally. All right. Hmm. I was kind of hoping. I guess I shouldn't have planned on it, but I was hoping that that second hit would, uh, take out that, uh, other mini Rufini. Yeah, if there was some way to influence what boss you started with, I think I might like to, uh, to start with Fred, simply because Fred is one of the harder ones to overcome, I feel like, at least for me. Really shouldn't be, I guess. I think probably I just get a little bit psyched out by the projectiles. Because it doesn't seem like they um, track you all that closely. I'd always thought that the uh, projectiles that the middle one shot followed you a little bit more closely than they seem to be. There we go. What was this boss's name? I'm sure we came up with a name for him. But I, I'm i just as sure that I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Oh dear. Of course, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if we named this one Akai or Hato.
Alright, there we are. Pretty easy boss. A little bit intimidating if for the uh, fact that it chases you a lot more aggressively than other bosses. Or I guess I should say the fact that it chases you at all. Because most bosses just don't. At least not that I've observed. And I don't feel like damage boosting right now, so... Or we won't. We're just not gonna. Yeah, of all the bosses that we've encountered, Wiggles is probably the easiest to stun lock. Possibly the only one that you can stun lock. I think, maybe. But, um... Yeah, Wiggles doesn't have uh, invulnerability before starting an attack pattern. So if you can hit them as soon as they're out of uh, hidden vulnerability, and I should also mention that they they don't have uh, they can't start an attack pattern while they're in hit in vulnerability. So if you can hit them immediately as they come out of it, then you can 100% consistently get them into uh, well maybe not 100% consistently I shouldn't say that, but um, in theory you will always be able to. You can always keep them in a state where you can damage them, but they can't damage you. Or at least, uh, if you damage them quickly enough, they won't be able to damage you in return. Hmm. One more hit on Steve should do it, I think. Hmm, that's not gonna work. Tragic. There we are. Yeah, it really was just one more hit. Very unfortunate that we had to take a, a hit ourselves there. Not bad, not bad. And we're gonna take this slow. We're neither going to get reckless, nor psych ourselves out. Yeah, for some reason I thought we'd already fought Mogus, but it seems like that's not the case. And I'm gonna come from the right. And I'm gonna miss. And they're gonna come from the left, and I won't miss. And they're gonna come from the right, and I won't miss again. Oh. Alright, now my rhythm's off. There we are. Whoops. I probably could stand to aim a bit more. But I'd like I liked to uh to think that my my understanding of the timing of Mogus's movement patterns was sufficient to uh keep me from harm from them. While also enabling my me to, to harm them. There we are. Very good. Back to Norris. It's often it's often a bit difficult to tell where exactly Norris is coming from, especially in the higher levels. That time I did know where Norris was coming from, I just didn't react in time. Yeah, I guess once Norris becomes fast enough, then it's entirely possible that you won't be able to hit them on reaction, depending on where they start their movement. And you have to be in roughly the right place. I guess you, I shouldn't say can't hit them on reaction, because you can. You just uh, can't always hit them on reaction, the same way you can when Norris is going a little bit slower. And I probably could have hit them there if I'd been uh, a little bit bolder. Hmm. 
So who do we have left? I think we have Chandler left. And one other boss. Um, Pounder, maybe? Oh, no. We have Ace left. Hmm. And have we already fought Chandler and Pounder then, I wonder? That could have gone better, but we hit the boss, so it's fine. Hmm. Alright. That, I don't feel like it really should have worked, but it did work. Broadly speaking. Hmm. Chandler might actually be our last boss. Um, think about it. Alright. Now that we've named all the bosses, I kind of want to name their the arenas that we fight them in. For some reason, I just I thought I saw Steve here, and I thought, you know, would be the cool name for this place, the Dusk Citadel, because you know it's got sort of a dusky, reddish, dark red, orangey, yellow fading into red, creating the impression of orange because there's only three colors on the screen. I don't know where I pulled the name Dusk Citadel from, but, uh, it's cool. Hmm. Could have been better. Hmm. Got hit there again. That was very unfortunate and unnecessary. Yeah, that time I not only used timing, but also positioning. Whoops. Timing and uh, mid-air repositioning, I should say. Wow, oh, that was foolish of me. Well, might as well, if we're going to take the damage, we might as well boost, I guess. I try to avoid intentional damage boost, because I want to, in theory, again, potentially play through this game on a difficulty other than novice. Uh, in which case, damage boosting would be not great. Not a great strategy, because you will, you will die. Because you do not have many lives. Yeah, Norris is really, really coming at me up here. Don't usually have this much trouble on Norris. And it's that, precisely, that led to me underestimating them this time. But, we have uh, defeated the evil here. So it's fine. Alright, and back to, to Ace. There we are. Oh dear. All right, all right. There we are. Alright, so, we're once again in the platforming section. We are once again losing to the platforming section that uh, has claimed so many attempts. Hmm. 
There we are. Pretty... Not, that wasn't a clean fight. But we did manage to beat Mogus pretty quickly there. Without too much issue. Yeah, the steam always throws me off, though. Might as well boost if we've already taken the damage. Yeah, it seems if you can hit Norse in the corners, even if it really seems like they should have hit you, uh, it seems like you can just sort of uh, get away with uh, a lot. Hmm. Not quite there. Oh dear. Yeah, we are doing a lot of unintentional damage boosts. Case in point. So, we've got to calm down a little bit. Collect ourselves and prepare for battle. Don't need to take unnecessarily ris risky moves. There's a reason why they're called unnecessarily risky. And this is another of the platforming sections that I struggle with greatly. Because it leads to this section. I forgot that this was the section that was immediately after that section. Chandler's Viridian Garrison, maybe. I don't know. Steve's Dusk Citadel, Chandler's Viridian Garrison. What's next? What's next on our list of area names? We really are just naming everything in this game. We haven't named the, the protagonist yet. Oh dear. But they kind of seem like a... Uh, <coughs> mysterious stranger type, so I feel like leaving them unnamed is for the better. They're coolest if they don't have a name, I think. Just another mysterious wanderer taking on the, the dangers of the shadow world. Hmm, this isn't gonna work. And indeed it didn't. It would have worked better if I had fallen into the, uh, the pit there, but I didn't. And I paid the price for it. Oh dear. Alright, alright. Come at me. There we go. Ah, just barely not high enough. Ah. And just a little bit too late. Oh. Oh. But yeah, that, uh... Hit invulnerability lasted a bit too long for me to, uh... Capitalize on. Once again, I... I'm not trying to uh, damage boost, and really I'm not, because I'm not saving any time by taking this damage. Yeah, if you aren't if you aren't boosting as a result of the damage, then it's just sort of damage. It's not a damage boost. Wiggles probably has the, the silliest name of all the bosses that we have named. Founder is a is a close second, I feel like, but Wiggles is the silliest. I kinda wanna name the area that Wiggles is in Wigglopolis. Wigglopolis. Nah. Wigglopolis sounds better. But yes, we're back in the Dusk Citadel. Was it the Dusk Citadel? It was Dusk something. I'm pretty sure it was Citadel. Hmm. 
All right. Not bad. Decent fight against Steve. And we're not going to let this, this platforming section psych us out. We won't. Nor this one. We're going to avoid the steam. I guess I don't know that it's steam. It could just be water. I'm assuming it's steam from the fact that it hurts us. Water not being known for causing immediate harm on, on contact. I suppose it could be some sort of caustic or corrosive liquid. There we are. Yeah, I don't know. It strikes me as being steam. Yeah, I just need to go a little bit slower in that area. And there we are. There we are. And to the right. And then, nope, we went to the left a bit too early. some reason I want to call Norris's area like something something I want to incorporate the word penumbra or penumbral into it I don't think it's probably not even the darkest area that we're in so penumbra is perhaps not uh super appropriate but we're kind of just ass assigning these not at random but uh you know I'm not being I'm not taking it too seriously it is entirely unnecessary The middle here is, I think, a pretty good place to respond to... Well, it's not a great place to respond to danger. But I guess, no, it's a pretty good place. Because the only... If if Nora spawns over there, or over there, and you're in the middle here, you can just drop down and avoid the attack. But uh, Norris is also fairly vulnerable. Uh, whatever, if they spawn on a lower level than that. You can pretty easily drop down from there and hit them. If you're in that position. I guess, yeah, Spades Spades's arena is darker and deeper. But maybe maybe Penumbra would be more appropriate for Spades. Spades is penum penumbral depths. Alright, here we are. And we're about to fight Chandler again, I think. Yeah, I do like how Chan Chandler is a boss that seems to incorporate electricity uh, into its uh, attacking routine. Mm, okay, that, that went pretty well. I wasn't expecting it to work, but it did work. Kind of. But yeah, so Chandler is a boss that incorporates electricity, it seems like, or something that resembles electricity, visually. And uh, yeah, they've got circuitry, or again, a pattern that resembles circuitry. And again, I should have gone down there, rather than challenging Chandler by going up. But alas. Hmm. Yeah, we've got to wait for Chandler to swing around once more. And I jumped jumped a little bit too early there. Or I shouldn't have jumped at all. And yeah, we're gonna have to gonna have to wait again for the pattern to reset. And I waited too long. Alright, no more psyching ourselves out. We've just gotta do this. Hmm. Well, we're gonna win, uh, at a cost, but, uh, we won.
You know, I just realized that uh, Ferris's boss arena resembles my uh, color scheme a little bit. Got a little bit greedy there, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't know why I thought I could jump high enough to hit that. Yeah, I guess it's probably less that, uh... Ferris's arena's color scheme matches my own, and more so that, uh... You know, orange and blue are complementary colors. Therefore, people are inclined to put them together, like I did, when designing my own color palette. I guess I'm, I lean a little bit more towards uh, yellow than towards orange a lot of the time. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, there's yellow here. There's yellow here, I suppose. Ah. Oh, whoops, I forgot to start in novice mode. I also missed a, a weak point of Ferris there. Alright, you know what, let's... Oh wait, no, I don't want to go down this way. Well, that took a couple lives off of us, unfortunately, but... That could have gone a lot worse. Did the sound cut out? That's not just on my end, is it? Well, I don't know how how it would cut out on my end and not cut out on yours. Oh. Alright, it's back now. Alright, back to the Wiggle... Wiggleseum? Sorry, right, Wiggleopolis. We can call it the Wiggleseum too, I guess. We're not above giving very silly names to things around these parts. We already established Wiggles as a as a silly name and Wiggleopolis as a silly name, so why why would uh, why would we have any objection to Wiggle the Wiggleseum? Hmm, that could have gone better. I got I got quite reckless against Wiggles there. No more recklessness. But what is bravery without a dash of recklessness? Nothing at all. And what is Tiberius Vanderfield without a sip? <coughs> sip. I'm taking a bit bigger sips than, than uh, usual recently. Which is probably the part of the reason why, uh... I'm having trouble not, uh, choking on my sips. Hmm. Got a bit overeager there. But yes, back in the Dusk Citadel. Very worried, very worried about Steve's movements here. But, we'll survive. And remember, you can't hit Steve uh, more than once per attack cycle. You just can't. At least I can't. Oh. I don't know whether or not you can, but I can't. Nope, that didn't work. Very good, that did work. This place has got a rusty color to it, so let's call it the Rust Spire. Norris's Rust Spire. Again, it's not really much of a spire. It does, it's not very tall. Seems that the BGM, or not the BGM, but the game's uh, music has uh, turned itself off. Yes, what was this? Penumbral Depths? 
I want to. I always want to say pit of penumbra, but I think it's penumbral depths is what we decided on last time. I guess I didn't ask you for input, so I decided on it. But you know, if anyone has any objections to the names or would like to suggest names of their own, you are of course free. Hmm. That was. Honestly, a lot better than some of our fights with Shades tonight, I guess. Uh-oh. Alright, so let's not get super turned around here. Oh dear. Did I move out of position there? Or did I just... Or was uh, Chandler's hitbox just a little bit longer than I anticipated it being? <laughs> Alright, so we gotta wait for him to swing around once more. No, I think no, we've got to Yeah, I was off I was off on our position in the cycle. And that didn't go well. But we still managed to get into position to hit Chandler, and we managed to hit Chandler, so it's all good. So this is about the point where I would have dropped down, I think, ideally. And I probably still could have made the cycle if I had jumped over to the side rather than to uh rather than trying to make it all the way up to the, the top again. And granted, me going back up to the top again did save me from taking damage. Or could have saved me from taking damage. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, there we go, there we go. Hmm, is this? That's not it. No. That's the start of the attack cycle. We need to wait till the end of it. Yeah, once Chandler starts uh, retracting. There we are. Five hits, moving into... Uh, who's next? Who's next? I want to say Pounder, but that doesn't feel right. Yeah, this is... Yeah, Ferris, Ferris. Does Pounder have a purplish or pinkish arena, then, I wonder? For me to... Uh, See that color and associate with them. Hmm. All right, we're still in an okay position. We could have been in a better position there, but oh! All right, Ferris was not messing around today. Yikes, that could have gone very badly. All right, so Rufini, Rufini, Rufini. Rufini's, Rufini's arena is the Azura division. No, this isn't really an Azura, I don't think. I really put a lot of, a lot of, uh, pomp on that pronunciation of Azure. Azure division. I want to incorporate division in the name somewhere, but I don't think Azure is the right color. And also, I'm still pronouncing it weird. I don't know if that's, you know, incorrect. I don't think that's an incorrect way to pronounce it, necessarily, but it's... feels unnecessarily... It feels like the way that someone would uh, pronounce it if they really wanted to show off how good they were at pronouncing words. Alright, Fred.
I've been trying to give the uh, bosses arena names, bosses boss arenas names based on their color. But the only thing that I can think of when I see Fred is is fear and pain. The uh, the purpleness of it really just doesn't uh, register to me even. Yeah, Fred is a is another of the bosses that definitely has a minimum number of cycles needed to beat. No, yeah, this isn't this isn't pink or purple in any way. So I don't know why I was associating that color with uh, Pounder. I think pink and green are complementary, so maybe that's why. Also, it's red and green that are complementary, not pink and green. I think it might depend on the shade a little bit. There we are. Ah. Just barely. We're not gonna... Oh no, we did get the chance to hit, to hit Steve. Very nice. Hmm. Alright. Two more hits, I think. Oh. Forgot to put on novice mode again. All right, back to the dusk citadel. <coughs> Think no. Yeah, we. I was wondering if I managed to get a hit on Steve there before uh, the first attack cycle. Because I always try to aim for that and I rarely achieve it. Well, maybe not rarely, but uh, I always aim for it. I don't always achieve it. And I was briefly distracted by thinking about whether or not I did achieve it there. But it's not relevant as long as I beat, uh, as long as I beat Steve. Or even if I don't, really. Because the it's not about dealing damage, it's about not taking damage. Not taking damage is how we make it to the end. We do have to deal some damage, but we don't have to worry too much about it or deal it all that quickly or anything. We could take a very long time on each boss and it would be fine. I'm assuming, I guess. I don't, I don't know for sure that there isn't any reason to uh, hurry. But uh, thus far I haven't been given a reason to hurry, so I'm just going to assume that there isn't one. All right, all right. I've been messing up the light puzzle a lot recently, so we've got to calm down and take it just as just as fast as it needs to be. This is one where you, there is definitely a minimum speed necessary to uh, undertake this. Could have gotten into position if we handled our platforming a little bit better there, but still managed to get through that. And we can reset pretty quick here. Nope. A little bit too early. I was too eager. Up above, where I can't easily hit. Didn't quite land our reset there as I might have liked. Ah, but defeated is the boss, so it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter how, how clean our path to get there was, as long as we do achieve our goal in the end, I suppose. Or at least, uh, it doesn't matter, you know. Because yeah, we didn't get hit, 
Ideally, I, I don't... Uh, did we get hit? I don't think we got hit. But yeah, I want to avoid getting hit. But beyond that, we don't need to land every attack of ours as long as we uh, remain relatively safe. And uh, we do accomplish our goal eventually. That could have gone a lot better. Very good. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, I don't feel like this section is, is hard executionally in so much as I feel like it just sort of garnered a lot of uh, psychological challenge to it from my repeated failures in it that uh, leads me to uh, to fearing it too much to uh, execute with confidence but it's fine and so we can drop down mm, drop down a little bit too early there Took a little bit too long to reset there. Hmm. Yeah, I knew there wasn't any way we were getting out of that. Hmm. Oh! I was sure that we would uh, have lost there, so I kind of... Uh, Stop paying attention, which is foolish of me. Because it's not over till it's over. It's never over till it's over. Yeah, it looks like I, I definitely got a little bit too, uh... <clears throat> a little bit too confident, perhaps, earlier on. Thinking like, oh, what if I have to uh, end the stream early? Because the game takes too long, or it doesn't take long enough. But uh, no, we're definitely, definitely uh, filling filling our time effectively. I would say that's the uh, the polite way to put it, I suppose. Tragic. All right, let's just take a second to stretch. All right. <coughs> we could have gone for an attack there. Could have gone for an attack there. But uh, I did not. I usually do. I don't know why I hesitated. Yes, can't get two attacks in per cycle, I don't think. Ah, a little bit too late. Yeah, I guess if we're... It doesn't take too long for Akai to uh, get ready to attack. So I guess if we aren't, like, mid-air uh, mid just about to hit them, then we probably shouldn't risk it. Uh, when they start flashing like that, because they are still vulnerable when they're flashing. Alright. And so this, where will this take us? I can't remember. You'd think that I might have uh, the rough order of the bosses in mind by this point, but I definitely do not. Wiggles is very much about to lose here. Well, maybe I shouldn't get cocky. There we are.
There we are. Okay. That went smoother than usual, I think. And that didn't go quite as smooth as usual, unfortunately. And that went even even less smooth. So let's not get uh, overconfident. Fine, doing fine. Just need to exercise basic and reasonable caution, and we will be through our confrontation with Steve in no time. Indeed. Simple if you know how. Another boss that's not too hard. Interesting how this is like <clears throat> the only boss that's like that we've seen so far at least that's like reasonably humanoid. But it's also like uh they're also a little bit smaller than we are, Mogus is. There's a lot of bosses that are roughly on the same scale in terms of height as we are, I suppose. I think Mogus might be the only one that's like no, well, only by a few pixels, I think, but like notably shorter than we are. that side, and just barely made that attack in time, too. Hmm. Didn't make that one in time, unfortunately. Hmm. That could have gone better. I got a little bit too eager to get to my usual position. I forgot that the reason that I go up here is not because it's, necess it's necessary. Necessarily necessary but because it offers advantages. But if I'm in such a position where, you know, I take that position because it's relatively easy to avoid taking damage in, while also being relatively easy to deal damage in. So if I'm about to, to take damage in that position, or if getting into that position would require me to take damage, then I shouldn't do it. Because the whole point of it is to not take damage. That, that was a bit of a trade. I don't like trading like that, but at least we got the, uh, the better end of the trade, I suppose. Felt a lot more dangerous than it needed to be. Hmm. Is it just me or does Chandler also swing at a different speed depending on how far we are into the boss fight? I guess that makes sense. But uh, I'd never, I hadn't been accounting for it. I hadn't been accounting for it. So that probably explains a lot of the instances of me taking damage that I really felt like I shouldn't have. Because yeah, the boss was just behaving differently to what I had expected. Hmm. Yeah, now that I now that I'm looking for it, it definitely seems like their Chandler is moving at a different speed uh, as the fight progresses. Which again does make sense. And uh 
yeah, that's definitely the explanation for a lot of the inconsistency in this fight. It's that it's just, you know, the speed... I thought that Chandler just moved at the same speed throughout the entire fight, but it's evidently... That is evidently not true. Hmm. Actually, we don't need to wait quite as long as I have been waiting. And uh, we messed up the timing there by starting to run off the wall again. But... There we are. And just one more hit, I do believe. So if we take this carefully, that wasn't quite as careful as I might have liked, but... Very good, very good. And we're just about on to Ferris. Hmm. Didn't like that. Didn't like that at all. Hmm. I feel like I could have timed that such that we would have hit that last node, but we did not, unfortunately. There we are. All right. Three hits. We've got like four bosses left, I think. We're doing, we're doing pretty good, I think. All right, we lost a hit there for a very foolish reason. I really didn't need to get that close. The timing's not that tight on the spikes. On the retracting and uh, extending spikes, I should say. I was expecting Rufini to go in the in this little tunnel here. And not to bounce off at weird angles there. Mm, no. If I'd followed through on that, I maybe could have uh, hit him at the right angle. But I want to be somewhat cautious, if I can. And it seems like the answer to the question of whether or not I can be somewhat cautious is, per is no. No, I cannot. Not right now. Maybe later. Okay, this is going reasonably well. The little Rufinis, the mini Rufinis, Ruminis, if you will. And I wouldn't. <laughs> but uh, are not terrible to manage. All right, two bosses, two hits, and we've got to fight Fred. Fred and Pounder, which... Mm, Pounder's not awful. Fred's kind of challenging, though. But I can't let myself get psyched out. That's my number one sort of run ender, I think. Ooh, that the uh, the <laughs> my no my number one run ender may be getting psyched out, but my number two run ender is is definitely Fred. And Fred very nearly showed off their uh, their capacity to end my run there. Maybe it's just that uh, when I'm moving faster, I'm spending less time sort of tracking Fred's firing patterns. But it almost seems like the more I move, the more likely it is that they'll hit me. Alright, so we're going to try it again. Of course, of course. Hmm. All right, all right. There we go, okay. 
pretty easy first fight. I think we'll give it like one or two more attempts. But I do definitely need to uh, do some more Destiny research before tomorrow. So I probably... well... Hmm. I might... actually I might just... I can't push the stream back very much. I don't know, because one way or another, will I be talking for two hours, I wonder, about Destiny 2 or Destiny lore? It's hard to estimate. I've never done anything quite like that before. If I'd been really bold there, I maybe could have like gone over to the, the wall fast enough to uh, be able to stomp on uh, Norris, but I was not feeling bold on that particular occasion. Once again, I missed the quick reset. And there, I got it. But then I fell, so I wasn't able to uh, enjoy the fruits of my success, unfortunately. Oh dear. I got distracted. I got to pay attention to where, where uh, Norris is coming from. Alright, at least we're getting spades out of the way pretty quickly, too. Or spade. Or, no, ace. Aces. Ace? No. Ace. Ace. Pardon. Yeah, I've been a silent observer. I see you're still fighting Mo Mungus and friends. Indeed we are. Indeed we are. You know, this is only only very tangentially related. Also, hello, Sheps. I didn't say hello to you. Yeah, Mogus. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, hello. How are you doing tonight? Called the Mogus. Yep. Oh, dear. Yeah, I know... I know someone who always pronounces, uh, the name of the game am among us as... Among us, like among us, as though it's all, as though it's like all one word, as opposed to um, two separate words. Like, uh, and they don't seem to be doing it as like a joke. I think that they just are not, maybe, maybe aren't aware that the the title of the game is in fact a phrase in English, and think that it's just like, I don't know, I don't know what they think it is, but. Uh, Again, they do they do not pronounce it like it is an English phrase. Yeah, I'm good. Did some D&D character creation. Finally got my unjanky model fixed. Ooh, nice. Mm. Yeah, they always pronounce it like Among Us or Among Us. Which always... I always get a little bit of a kick out of that. And this is going to hit me. Oh dear. Alright, but we should only need one more hit on Chandler. Yeah, thought that was an actual meme. I mean, it is a meme to pronounce the name of the game in a weird way, but like I'm pretty sure this person this person that I'm talking about, who is a person that I know like uh in I was gonna say in person, in in uh not online, basically. Uh this person that I know, I think that they're just not, I think that they're just pronouncing it a bit oddly out of unfamiliarity with it. Because they're not like a video game type. They just sort of know about it from the fact that it's popular amongst uh, kids, basically. So I don't think that they're intentionally pronouncing it oddly as a joke. I think that they just genuinely don't don't recognize the, the the title as a phrase and just think that it's a word that was made up, basically. Of course I could be wrong, but um that is the impression that I get from the way that they that they pronounce it and speak about it. I'm gonna take a sip real quick. Sip.
So yeah, my number one number one damage source in this room is definitely over caution. Have I played VVV VVV? I have not played VVV VVV. I do have VVV VVV, but I've never uh never never played it. That's the or that's oh I was gonna say the one where you have like some sort of gravity uh switching ability, but there's probably a lot of platformers that have uh gravity and control over it as a mechanic. Speaking of games with, with gravity as a mechanic, I want to play Gravity Rush on stream sometime. That how long is Gravity Rush, I wonder. Might be a little bit too long for me to uh to play in between now and uh I really uh really went for uh went for that hit on Rufini there and it really did not pay off. Hmm, this is bad. Alright, alright. Yeah, I wanna play Gravity. Oh! Wait, hold on. That was a... Is it just me or did, like... That... Didn't look like it, like... Worked properly. I... It... Was I not paying attention or did, like, Rufini just split into, like, two... When Rufini split, did Rufini split into, like, two larger Rufinis? Rather than smaller ones. Did I... Did I imagine that? Have I lost my mind? Review the footage. I will... I will have to do that. I will have to do that. Is that didn't look right. Because, yeah. I'll definitely have to look over that again. Alright, I shouldn't be getting distracted by that, because I have a boss to fight here. <laughs> and I was spending... I was so preoccupied with that previous boss fight that I forgot about the fight that they were doing right now. Yeah, I apologize for my rudeness, Ferris, in ignoring you. Uh oh. Mm, didn't quite make it that time. Yeah, this is probably the worst Ferris fight we've had in a very long time. Ferris is full of rage, indeed. Ferris is really taking me to taking me to task. All right. Hmm. Once again, unnecessary caution. He's stuck spinning in a cage. Yes. <laughs> Despite all my rage, I'm still just a a diamond-shaped central central uh hitbox in a cage. Oh dear. All right. Oh dear. There we are. All right, we're back to Fred, our great nemesis. Here to punish us for our hubris. Hmm, but Fred is being... Nope, nope, I was gonna say, Fred's being unusually merciful today, but no. Yeah, the music in this game is pretty good. It's a, it's a shame that most of the, uh, the tracks are just really short. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, Fred's definitely... Definitely out to punish me today. There is no mercy to be found in, the, in these eyes. There is no mirth to be found in this smile. But, we came out on top this time. 
Interesting. I just realized that there's no, like, uh... There's no little platforming section in between, uh... In between, uh, Fred and Pounder. I'm still not 100% sure if Pounder is the name that we settled on for this guy. I can't remember. I found this boss to be very forgettable, uh... Last week. But, uh... He's been giving me the business, giving me the business as well today. Out to prove that they're not, uh, not forgettable. A lot of the, a lot of the things that were easy last time feel like they, they're harder now. But a lot of the things that were hard last time feel like they're a lot easier now. Hmm. Just a bit too high. Alright, alright. Not bad. Pretty decent Akai fight. No damage so far. On Akai, anyway. And no damage in the area immediately after Akai, also, which is very unusual. Oh. Very unusual. Alright. Back to, to, to Wiggles. To Wiggles' zone. The Wigglesium. Oh, okay, so I definitely phased, just phased through Wiggles that time. So yeah, it does definitely seem like the bosses take a little while for their hitbox to uh, activate. In the past, I've only noticed that against Steve, but it definitely did just happen with Wiggles there. Oh dear. Okay. 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 Hmm. Unfortunate. All right. One more attempt, I think. One more attempt, I think. Wrong way. Yeah, and speak of Steve. Here we are, about to fight Steve again. Hmm. Yes, so it is possible, we've, we've established now, and we've established before, hmm. that we can hit Steve before his first uh, attack pattern starts. But, if we try to go too hmm. fast, then we can't hit Steve. So yeah, it definitely seems to be an issue of and again, I'm not 100% sure whether or not this is intentional or not. Or if it's uh, just sort of, maybe some sort of uh, issue with the loading or something. But the bosses definitely do seem to uh, be invulnerable for a short while upon you entering the room. And I guess probably the only reason why I don't notice this in more bosses is just the fact that most of them start out far enough away from you that you can't hit them immediately? Oh, that went a lot better than I expected, actually. I didn't... I wasn't sure that I would get hit there, but I didn't think that I would hit there. All right, back to the light room. This room is just absolutely menacing. The puzzle is relatively benign, but the room itself, the ambiance, is just off the wall frightening. And back to Norris. Hmm. There we go. I didn't think I'd actually land that attack. 
Very good, very good. Ah. There we are. Norse is a boss that's relatively easy for us to deal with. Just requires a basic amount of patience. Ace, on the other hand, has always been trouble. Yeah, I really do have to just get used to the idea of sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes you have to wait for the boss to be vulnerable. Which, I don't have a huge trouble grasping that for most of the bosses in this game. But uh, for Ace, I always try to sort of rush into fighting. to Chandler. Probably could have made that pattern if we really, really went for it. But yeah. Now that now that I've realized the timing is slightly different, or gets faster as the, the fight goes on, I'm a little bit off off the tempo of this fight. I'm being perhaps a little bit overly cautious. But better overly cautious than underly cautious, I guess. Except, you know, in instances like that, where my overcaution is uh, overshadowed by impatience, and I take a risky move that really doesn't pay off and really had no chance of paying off. I mean, I still got the hit in, but uh, at, a, at a terrible price. But yeah, definitely the music that, that plays in the fight with Chandler is especially notable for being unfortunately short because it just sort of maybe uh maybe the issue is just I'm taking the, the fight a bit too slow. But it it feels like the uh half the fight or more is just uh in relative silence with just the the sound of my jumps and my occasional damage being taken or being dealt to break up the, uh, that quiet. Back to Ferris once more. But yeah, so if we don't beat Conquer the Shadow World tonight, I guess I know what we're doing uh, next Thursday. It is... It is still very possible. We're at a pretty decent number of hits. We're at a slightly less decent number of hits now. But we're, we were doing pretty good. We were doing pretty good. Okay, I was a bit worried that Rufini was gonna get chase me into the tunnel there, and uh, that would have been all kinds of bad. Hmm. That could have been better, but it could have been worse. And... oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. And... success. Alright, who's next? Oh, Fred. Well, at least we're not going to have to deal with Fred, uh, very soon. At least we're going to have Fred out of the way here. Before too long. 
and we can't can't hit Fred twice per attack cycle, so don't don't risk your neck trying. Yeah, it definitely seems like Fred's aim is worse than I thought it was. And I'm not sure... Well, I got hit there, but... It definitely feels like Fred's aim is worse than I thought it was. And I'm not sure if I've just gotten better at dodging, or if, um... Because nothing has changed about the game, I'm sure. But I'm not sure if it's just that I've gotten better at dodging, or I'm just paying more attention. I guess the two... In this case, paying more attention and being better at dodging are sort of the same thing. As long as it gets results. Ah. If I'd been a little bit more nimble there, I could have gotten to a Kai and, uh... My over-eagerness cost me a hit there. Alright, alright. Two more hits, I think, on Akai. Because, yeah, I guess... It, I think it's Akai, not Akai, per se. It's a subtle difference. But it's definitely a difference. Alright, this is... that was unfortunate. Alright, so, we're at 91% completion, we've got several hits left, and we've got Wiggles to deal with, who is one of the easier bosses. So, I might in fact have to look for a new game to play next Thursday after all, or I could try to play this game on the harder difficulty. Hmm. All right, so we've uh, we have conquered the shadow world. It seems like. We did it. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. You've conquered novice mode. Novice mode ends before the final boss battle. If you want to fight the final boss, try normal mode. All right. Okay, so we do know what we're doing next next uh next Thursday. All right. Very good. Very good. So, we do have more to, uh, there we go. We do have more to, uh, more to come, more to come. So, now is a very good time to, uh, to end up, I guess. Because we, yeah, we have concluded our business in this, in the shadow world today. But there is yet more to be, to be had. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, yes. So, wrapping up. We gotta wrap up. So, thank you for joining for Conquer the Shadow World tonight. Been lovely. Um, let's see. So, tomorrow, like I said, we'll be starting the two-part Destiny lore presentation series before the actual, you know, playing of Destiny 2, Forsaken. Yeah, again... Probably not necessary, per se. Maybe not even optimal, but I felt like it was something that I wanted to do for, uh, for the sake of, you know, not dropping, dropping us into the dead center of Destiny 2 with no real context of uh, what's going on in the, in the universe. And so, yeah, so just as a reminder, uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about sort of the backstory of the Destiny world not really um, anything that has a whole, whole lot of bearing on the sort of immediate uh, plot of Destiny. I will, in fact, deli be deliberately avoiding some details for the sake of uh, leaving... Uh, yeah, for the sake of brevity and uh, ease of comprehension. But, um, yes. 
that we'll be talking about, sort of the uh, the backstory of the of Destiny, and then next Friday we'll be talking about the plot of Destiny and Destiny Two, and uh, ideally, if we're able to get that done quick enough, we'll be uh, playing Destiny Two also. Again, there's not as much rush to uh, playing it as I perhaps thought, uh, or as rush to as much rush to play Forsaken as I thought there was. Because I thought that they were going to remove that expansion from the game in December, but it's actually going to stick around until February. So, and pretty late February too, I think. I think it's like February 22nd or something like that. But yes, um, that will be next Friday and the Friday afterwards, February 22nd. Thank you, Clockwork Moose, for the uh, for the fact check. But yes, so we don't have uh, we don't have to rush, and that's nice. Oftentimes I do end up sort of rushing, rushing the end of, uh, rushing through things before, uh, right before they, uh, sort of the, they are removed from, from games and whatnot. I have a tendency to, uh, like in timed events, I tend to, uh, <laughs> I tend to put them off until like one or two days before they end and I have to scramble to, to catch up and things like that. So it's nice to have sort of, you know, months in theory that we could spend on this before before it uh, concludes yes how are you doing tonight clockwork moose i realized i didn't didn't ask when you uh popped in there but yes so that will be the next stream and the uh friday after that next uh thursday i suppose we will be doing attempts at clearing uh conquer the shadow world on normal mode so that we can see the final boss um, yes, and we're, we're kind of going out of order here, but, uh, next Tuesday, we will also be doing a, uh, a collab stream with Altariana, Cheppy Sheps, and Judokami, as per usual. We should be continuing Borderlands 2, uh, we'll likely be playing another game. Yeah, sorry, I'm great at lurking. That's, that's, uh, that's good, that's good, you know. Uh, but yeah, you know, as long as you're here, it's good to, I mean, you know, even if you aren't here, I'm glad, uh, glad to have you here supporting me tonight. You know, be where you want to be, whenever. Talk if you want to talk. Don't talk if you don't want to talk. It's all good. We don't, uh, we don't put any pressure around here. But, um, where was I? Yes. So next Tuesday, the lab stream, Altariana, Sheppy Sheps, and Judokami. We'll be playing some Borderlands 2. Uh, we might be playing another game. We'll likely be playing another game. We've played another game all of the other, uh, long collab nights that we've been doing. And, uh, so yeah, once again... We've sort of, uh, the plan is, generally, that we will be starting our collabs at 5.30 Central Time going forward and having, you know, more time to play, uh, multiple games together or put a lot of time into one game, something like that. Um, then, so yes, next Thursday, we'll be streaming again at 7.30 p.m. with some more Conquer the Shadow World. Um, I don't know whether or not we will necessarily uh, beat it on normal mode in one stream. I think we'll do we'll do one more stream at least of it, and if we don't uh, beat it on normal mode again at the end of that stream, we'll do one more. But I think after three we will call it for the the time being, and we might revisit it later. Because again, I do want to um, keep to for the most part shorter games during this time. Uh, before we move on to our next big projects, because our next big projects are going to be very big indeed. Uh, in case any of you weren't around when I mentioned it, or anything like that, because I know, yeah, Clockwork Moose, I know at least you have been, you're fairly recent uh, as a follower. Um, yeah, I'm going to be, uh, in the not-too-distant future, I'm going to start playing uh, uh, Breath of the Wild in Japanese, as a sort of Japanese learning... Uh, I was going to say test, but no, not a test. Uh, as a... Sort of a, more of a study tool, I guess. An excuse to ensure that I am studying Japanese somewhat consistently for this, for uh, for the sake of uh, comprehending the uh, the regular Japanese gameplay and constant Japanese text that we will be uh, exposed to. And uh, so yes, we will also be playing Final Fantasy XIV. Is the plan currently uh, contemporary? Yeah, contemporaneously. Is that the word I'm looking for? At the same time. <laughs> I often use words that are more complicated than they need to be, but uh, at about the same time as that. In English, but, uh, but yes, we'll be playing Final Fantasy XIV as well. 
So, um, but yeah, that is not for a little while. That is probably for a couple weeks or so, or weeks, sorry, months, <laughs> months yet before we are, we are doing that. We'll also in the distant, not too distant future, start rolling out some new uh, assets, some slightly refined assets, like a new game screen. We'll have a, a new sort of studio here, ideally. Um, in the, again, pretty soon. I don't know how long it'll take. This this is a relatively complex scene already, and I intend to make the uh, the revised version even more complex. But uh, we'll see how that uh, treats us. I might actually make sort of a, a more basic scene and just sort of like load it with props and all that. That might be fun to do. I can sort of shift things around for uh, every now and then or for events and all that. But yeah. So we will we will see more of that in the near future as well. And let's see, is there anything else to go over? I think that should cover basically everything. I've talked over all of the topics. Um, I think I've I've sort of been talking back and forth in uh, in circles. So uh, I apologize I apologize if I'm not necessarily as clear uh, with what's going on as I as I could have been. So let's summarize For tomorrow. Destiny 2 lore, Friday, or tomorrow, Friday, Destiny 2 lore, 10 a.m. Central Time. Next Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Central Time or so, a collab with Altariana, Sheppy Sheps, and Yudokami featuring Borderlands 2 and probably another game. Next Thursday, we'll be continuing Conquer the Shadow World, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And then next Friday, gotta, yes, thank you for the, for the love, Sheps. Yes, and uh, next Friday, we will be uh, uh, continuing the Destiny 2 lore and potentially starting Destiny 2 if we get through the Destiny 2 lore quick enough. So, that is the immediate future. Another thing that I want to do is I want to start putting out like a, like proper sort of uh, schedules on my Twitter. Because usually I just sort of, uh, even though I have a fairly, you know, things fairly planned out, I usually just sort of post uh, post just before a stream starts rather than having a schedule that people can reference throughout the week, which I feel like would probably be a bit more useful. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going to start doing that. I would like to start doing that. And um, let's see, I think that should be every all the basics covered. Um, yeah, so it's that time of night again. We're going to get ready for a raid. If anyone has any raid suggestions, please feel free. Let's take that again. Please feel free to drop them. Let me know who you who you would like to see. If uh, if nobody has any suggestions, I am perfectly able to find someone myself, though. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take a sip. <clears throat> My throat's been a little bit dry today, or uh, for this stream. Yeah, you want someone small? Small, big. I, I'm not too. Uh, I'm not picky. You know, I like to. I like to, to visit folks of all of all sizes. Trying to maybe also get their affiliate. All right. Sounds like you've got someone in mind. But yeah. Uh. Uh. Look. Yeah. Let me hit me hit me with the hit me with the name then. Someone, there's someone also doing games plus demos. All right. Doing three games today. Ooh, nice. Ah, Paula Bastion VT. All right. And let's go drop, drop by their stream and say hello. Ba -ba -ba -ba. set this raid up. All right, so we will go and drop by Hollow Bastion VT. Uh, yes, the raid message, of course, as always, is we have arrived. But yes, thank you all for being here with me tonight. I hope you have had a fine time, or I hope you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night. I hope that you will be well until next time I see you. 
Uh, just to let you know, though, they only use their mile during chatting. Gotcha. No problem. But yes. Once again, thank you all for being here tonight. And, uh, yeah. I hope you will, will continue to be well until next time I see you. And after that, too, as well. <laughs> yes. Let us get this raid underway. Have a good night, you two. And, yes. Let us get this raid underway. Farewell. <laughs>